were not at the Derby. But a friend of ours was and says it's a true bucket list item. You need to go to the Kentucky Derby at least once in your life. But since we weren't there, let's get somebody who is a trained professional, can describe it accurately, uh, give us insight. ESPN's own Janine Edwards. Janine, what was it like at the Derby this year? Well, you know, it, it felt kind of different uh, coming coming off the American Pharaoh high of last year, and, you know, winning the Triple Crown and the Breeders' Cup. And, it, you know, people kind of didn't know what to feel. But considering they had the second largest crowd in Derby history and second largest uh, wagering handle, uh, I'd say that it was a really well received event. And um, considering that going into the race, nobody really knew who to pick. We weren't sure how good these horses were. There was a lot of parity in the race, and people were saying maybe this is just an average bunch, bunch of three year olds. I think Nyquist silenced those critics and those thoughts because here he is now a perfect eight for eight and he just keeps finding ways to win so it's really going to be exciting um seeing what he does now janine why do you think it was such a well-attended race and the handle was up so much i mean certainly nyquist isn't the the first horse to go in with a lot, a lot of anticipation i mean there's a lot been a lot of other great matchups in the derby so what was so special about this one you know, I think there was just so much buzz created last year because of American Pharoah, and I think he brought so many new fans to the sport. There was so much media, so much publicity generated because of American Pharoah that I know for a fact that there were first-time derby goers and first-time race fans that wanted to be at the Kentucky Derby this year. And, you know, walking around the facility on Derby Day, I saw, you know, it was just like you barely had room to move. I saw the most stunning outfits. I mean, that everybody was just decked out in their, in their derby finest. And we had great weather, of course, until right after the race um, when we had storms move in. But all day Friday and Saturday, we had beautiful weather and just picture-perfect crowds and great racing. And I think there was just a lot of positive vibe left over from last season. Janine Edwards of ESPN joining us right here. LeVac and Wolf 104.5, the team. Janine, now that Nyquist has won this race, do you think we'll get the speculation, we'll get, we'll get the, the attention of the masses the, the way we did uh, for the early runs of American Pharaoh? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's already started, you know, because the people who were questioning uh, Nyquist's pedigree and his ability to go a mile and a quarter because he was he's by a sire who was basically more of a miler type. Um, those people have now said, okay, this this horse is the real deal. I mean, it, 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 and he's just such a competitor. The jockey says, even when he feels like he's gearing himself down, if another horse comes up to him, he digs back in again. He does not want to let other horses pass him. And I've watched his prior races, and he's done just that. Other horses have come right up to him, and he looks beat. And he just digs in and finds another gear and is able to pull away. So he's a horse that's a true professional around the barn and in the morning training. He's everything right, great disposition, great demeanor, just like American Carol last year. And on the racetrack, he's just all business. And, and his owner described him perfectly after the race. He said, he's a Ferrari. He's absolutely a Ferrari. So... Uh, I know he's going to be facing a large field in the Preakness. They're talking like 12, 13 horses for the race. Um, but, but Nyquist has proven that he is a really special, unique individual. See, now that surprises me a little bit, uh, the large field in the Preakness. I mean, yeah, that, I, mean, I know, right? Yeah, that says that there are people in you know, the horse business that still think he could really be beaten. I mean, how I'm wondering how big the field was for... I'm a big secretary fan, so whenever I talk to a horse, everything person, goes back to secretary. Everything goes back to the secretary. I would, yeah, I, exactly. I, <laughs> that's, where, that's where it all begins and ends, right? I, I would have married that horse. <laughs> yeah, Paul. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, as a matter of fact, there's, there's, there was one thing I watched uh, online. I just discovered it's, I forgot what the website is, but I'm sure it's easy to find, where they took American Pharaoh and they took... Uh, in this case, Secretariat. And then they ran the Derby at the same time as if they were running against each other. Yes. And, it, you know, it, it showed really that, okay, Farrell was a great horse, but he was no Secretariat. How good 
is is Nyquist. You've you 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 talk to people on the inside. You've been on the back stretch. You hear the chatter among horse people. What do you think? How far can this horse go, providing it has no problems? Well, you know, it, coming from a background in horse racing, have I know that a lot of times you can have the best horse in a race and still get beat. Yep. And it's because there are so many other variables. You can have track condition that maybe favors another horse more than your horse. You can have traffic problems. Um, a pace that is not favorable or, you know, something really weird happens. There are just so many variables that it's horse racing. And that's why it's, it's such an enigma. It can be very frustrating, very maddening. That's why it's also so alluring because anything can happen and you just never know. Um, so I think on the best day with the right conditions, um, with nothing really weird, freaky happening, I think Nyquist is the best horse and should win the Preakness. That being said, moving forward to the Belmont Stakes, I do believe he could be having a, a, a real challenge. And I say that because, as I mentioned, his, his fire was more of a miler. The Belmont is, of course, a mile and a half, very testing distance. And the track surface at Belmont Park is unlike any other in the country. It's very deep and very sandy. And um, it can be hard, of course, that's not bred to get the distance go that far on that type of a tight, deep surface. But, you know, we haven't gotten there yet. Let's get through the Preakness. <laughs> uh, let's, you know, let's see. But I, like you, am a little surprised that it, it looks like there could be around 13 right now pointing for the race. Janine Edwards joining us, uh, talking about the Derby, getting ready for the Preakness right here on LeVac and Wolf 104.5, the team. Now, Janine, you have the horse racing background. You, you look around. The people are, are telling you what's going on. Who are the threats in that large Preakness field to take Nyquist out in the second leg of the Triple Crown? Well, I would say definitely Exaggerator, the yep. horse who was second in the um, Kentucky Derby, who has also finished second to uh, Nyquist a couple times before, and I know his trainer's getting tired of running <laughs> to Nyquist, <laughs> yeah. but Exaggerator is a really, really nice horse. Um, I think Gunrunner, um, who was third, was he third or fourth? I can't remember, in the uh, Derby. Third, yeah. Uh, the one who, yeah, pressed the pace all the way, ran a very, very gutsy race. He's a really, really nice horse. Um, and then there are a couple of new shooters coming in. Uh, there's a horse named Sharp Azteca who may be running in the race. He won on Derby Day at Churchill. Uh, there's a horse named Fellowship who ran on Derby Day at Churchill. Um, he's also a nice horse. I think right now, of the horses are coming out of the Derby, I would say Exaggerator and Gunrunner are the, the main two threats. And of the rest of them, I don't know if they're in the same class as Nyquist. Now, uh, Exaggerator was charging. I think I'm maybe one length behind to finish. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah the race was a little longer. Who knows? Yeah, but, well, yeah. you know, people are going to look at that. Okay, he was catching, and maybe if it was another... You know, eighth of a mile, it might have been a different outcome. What do you think? Well, if you ask the jockey, he'll say no way. There's no way that this horse would have let him by. And if you look closely at the end of the race, uh, Nyquist's jockey was actually gearing the horse down. He knew he had the race won, and he didn't just keep whipping and beating on the horse. He was thinking ahead <laughs> to the Preakness in two weeks. You know, he's, let's not empty the tank completely, yeah. which was smart. So I'm not 100%, even though Exaggerator was gaining on him, I'm not 100% sold on the fact that he would have come up. Um, and keep in mind, guys, the Preakness is a 16th of a mile shorter than the Derby. Yep. And its turns are a little, I mean, they're a little tricky. They're tricky. No, actually, that's a, that's a myth. That is a myth. Is it really? If you, if you, we, we've done it on the air on ESPN. We, we superimposed. Pimlico and Churchill Downs on top of one another, and they are exactly the same. Very interesting. Huh. I did not see. That's know why. That. That's why Janine's. Uh, she's everywhere. Janine Edwards joins yeah. us on the back and Wolf. <laughs> now, now was it last year? You came and hung out with us a little bit in Saratoga at the track. Are we? Gonna, yeah, that was a great time. Uh, do we need another Triple Crown winner to get you back, or are you going to come hang out with I us don't anyway? Know. I don't know. You know, I'd love to be there. I'd love to be back on with you guys at Saratoga. I love to talk to my bosses because. Um, 
unless we have like a really big story for me to cover for Sports Center, I'm not sure that I would get there unless I take a couple vacation days and you know, which is always possible, uh-huh. and just come as a fan. Love to do so. We'll uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'd love to have a reason to go for work, though. It would be great if we had another triple crown winner. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll put a we'll put a bug in Nyquist's ear to to get things going for you because I got a feeling. Yeah, please. <laughs> if if, if Janine Edwards can't get things done at ESPN, Jeff Levac or Bob Wolf certainly no. can't get things done no. at ESPN. Oh please! Oh no, no. Well, every little bit helps. So, <laughs> I, yeah, we'll. I mean, we'll start making noise. Well, we'll, we'll, take, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do a petition. Yeah, we're all yeah, about it. There you go. You start a petition, exactly. <laughs> and and I'll come on with you guys before the Belmont if we get that far as well. And then we'll just make it a little root ritual. Sounds don't, great. Don't threaten us with a good time. We yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Janine Edwards, the the great one. She's everywhere for horse racing and everything. What are you doing? What are you covering next? Well, you know, I'm going to get through the um, the Preakness, and the NBA playoffs are still on, and I live here in Oklahoma now, so I may do a little Thunder coverage. Um, and then I'll probably have a little downtime, and then we'll start gearing up for college football. Oh, yeah. So we'll be doing some training camp stuff and, uh, and, and all that fun stuff that starts happening in the summer. I can't believe it's, you know, only like two months away. Well, with all that going on, we're glad that you could make some time for us, Janine Edwards. Thank you so much. Thanks, Janine. A- anytime, guys. Hope to talk to you soon. You got it. Absolutely. Thank you. She's awesome.